The two of you have largely avoided capital allocation mistakes by bouncing ideas off of one another. Will this continue along into Berkshire's future? And I'd like to, I'm interested in both at headquarters and at subsidiaries. Uh, it can't continue very long. I... <laughs> Don't get defeatist, Charlie. <laughs> uh, any successor that's put in a Berkshire uh, capital allocation abilities and proven capital allocation abilities uh, are certain to be uppermost in the board's minds or in, in the current case in terms of my recommendation, Charlie's recommendation for what happens after we're not around. Uh, capital allocation is incredibly important at Berkshire. Right now we have 280 years, 90 billion, whatever it may be, of shareholders' equity. Uh, if you take the next decade alone, you know, nobody can make accurate predictions on this, but the, in the next 10 ne years, if you just take and depreciate, uh, depreciation, right now is another 7 billion a year, something on that order. Uh, the next the next manager in the decade is going to have to allocate maybe 400 billion or something like that, maybe more. And it's more than already has been put in. So 10 years from now, Berkshire will be an aggregation of businesses where more money has been put in in that decade than everything that took place ahead of time. So you need a very sensible capital allocator uh, in the job of, of being CEO of Berkshire, and we will have one. Uh, it would be a terrible mistake uh, to have someone in this job where really capital allocation might be might even be their main talent. That probably should be very close to their main talent. Um, and of course, we have an advantage at Berkshire and that we do know how important that is, and there is that focus on it. And in a great many companies, people get to the top uh, through ability and sales. Sometimes they come from the legal side, something like all different sides, and they then have the capital allocation sort of in their hands. Now they may not establish strategic. Uh, thinking divisions, and they may listen to investment bankers and everything, but they better be able to do it themselves. Uh, and uh, if they've come from a different background or haven't done it, it's a little bit, as I put in one of my letters, I think it's like getting to Carnegie Hall, playing the violin, and then you walk out on the stage and they hand you a piano. I mean, it, 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 is, it is something that uh, Berkshire would not do well if somebody was put in who had a lot of skills in other areas, but really did not have a, a an ability of capital allocation. I've talked about it as, as being something I call a money mind. I mean, people can have 120 IQs or 140 IQs or whatever it may be, very similar scoring abilities in terms of intelligence tests. And some of them have minds that are good at one type of thing and some of them another. I've, I've, I've known very bright people that do not have money minds, and they can make very unintelligent decisions. They can do all kinds of other things that most mortals can't do, but it just doesn't, it isn't the way their wiring works. And I've known other people that really would not do that brilliantly. They do fine, but on an SAT test or something like that, but they've never made a dumb money decision in their life. And Charlie, I'm sure, has seen the same thing. So we do want somebody, and hopefully they've got a lot of talents, but we certainly do not want somebody that if they lack a money mind. Charlie? Well, there's also the option of buying in stock, yeah. which, so it isn't like it's some hopeless problem. One way or another, something intelligent will be done. And a money mind will recognize when it makes sense to buy in stock and doesn't. You know, and uh, in fact, it's a pretty good test for some people <laughs> in terms of management's how they think about something like buying in stock. Uh, because it, it's not a very complicated 
equation if you sort of think straight about that sort of a subject. But some people think that way and some don't, and they're probably miles better at some than something else. But they say some very silly things when you get to something that seems so clear as whether, say, buying in stock makes sense. 